How's it going, everybody? Anthony from The Rock Studio here. I want to give a warm welcome to all my new subscribers. You probably found out about me on the unintentional ASMR video, so I'm going to try to be pretty chill during this one. But who knows? I might get a little excited. I've got a video today. It's a real handy little thing that I'd like to share with you. I made a small audio cable, which is a female XLR connector to a 3.5 millimeter aux connector. I'm using it right now to record the audio from my DAW to my camera. It's a really simple project. You just need two connectors and a little bit of cable and a little bit of time because it only takes a few minutes to make. So please stick around and check it out. And thanks so much for watching and being with me here on The Rock Studio. For this project, I'm using about a six foot length of balanced install cable with a foil shield. Here you see I'm just stripping back a little tiny bit. Since I'm using a tiny 3.5 millimeter connector, you can't really strip back that much. I'm using this install cable or rack cable because I have plenty of it on hand and the stuff that I have is very flexible with a nice jacket on it. However, you can use whichever cable you're comfortable with or whichever you have on hand. Typically, a small diameter cable is going to work best when you're making a 3.5 millimeter connector, but I'm not saying I haven't used full-size mic cable in the past. Typically for this, you'd use miniature microphone cable or even lavalier cable. Next step, I'm going to tin the drain wire. Next, I'm going to tin all three of the contacts on the connector itself. Now for the very first critical part. Don't forget to slide the connector's shell over the cable before you solder the contacts, or you'll be unsoldering and then soldering them back again. Most 3.5mm connectors also come with a clear insulator piece to go on the inside, so don't forget to slide that over as well. The next step is to hold the cable up to the connector and figure out how much of the conductors you'll want to strip off. Remember, you need to keep them really short so the jacket of the cable gets clamped underneath the strain relief of the connector. Tin each of the conductors. Now you'll notice that the drain wire has to be trimmed a little bit shorter. Next step is to figure out the left and right contacts in the connector. On this one, the left side contact, which is also the tip, happens to be on the left. So arrange the conductors of the cable so they line up with the contacts of the connector. It's the four C's of making a cable. Very carefully solder the conductors to the contacts. I should note that while making the 3.5 millimeter connector, I'm using a really small needle point on my soldering iron. Typically when I'm soldering an XLR connector, I'll use a larger tip with a flat, almost chisel point because there's so much more surface area to heat up. Soldering the drain conductor to the connector is probably the most difficult because it's really small. I typically wet the tip of the soldering iron and heat up the whole bottom and just push that conductor in via the cable itself. I only use authentic Neutra connectors. I use the new style with gold pins. You can see on the package it says, with hologram. You can see the holographic effect if you twist the connector under a light. The embossed letters have an iridescent look, where they display a rainbow of colors as you twist. If you're new to making XLR cables, all you have to do is look at the front of the connector and the pins are each numbered, one, two, and three. If you flip the connector over, you'll notice that they're numbered on the back as well. Pin one is drain or shield, pin two is hot, and pin three is cold. So between hot and cold, you're gonna use your colored conductors of the cable, typically Red would be pin 2 hot, black would be pin 3 cold. It's not too critical as long as you remember what color code you use and then use it on both ends of the cable. In fact, it doesn't matter at all on this specific cable because we're going mono balanced to stereo unbalanced. So we're actually going to make a double mono unbalanced cable, which is a lot simpler than it sounds. We're just going to connect both of the colored conductors to pin 2 hot and that will spread out across tip and ring or left and right on the unbalanced side. So the left and right channel of your recorder are going to be getting the exact same signal. So it's just going to be double mono. You can see here why you'd want to use a wider tip on your soldering iron because you've got to fill those XLR cups all the way up with solder. I typically strip back about three quarters of an inch from the end of the cable to make an XLR. Trim back the shielding foil, trim back any string or anything that's in there. Strip back about an eighth of an inch of each of the conductors and tin those as well. Now remember, this is a very atypical cable that we're making, so we're going to twist both of the conductors together and solder them into pin two. When you're ready to solder, wet the tip of the soldering iron with some solder, 
Reheat the cup and liquefy the solder that's in there before inserting the cable. Then steadily hold the cable until the solder cools back to its solid form. Now do the same thing for the drain wire. Unbeknownst to you, I've given each of you a test. If you're following along, let's see if you remember to slide the connector cover over the cable before you soldered the conductors. Now we're all finished with the cable. We're just going to slide the cable clamp on the XLR side and tightly screw on the back cover. Then we'll flip the cable over get the 3.5mm jack. I always wait until the cable is cooled off because there's always a risk of pushing one of the conductors into the shield while the cable jacket is still hot and soft. So just gently tighten the clamp around the cable. You don't want to damage it at this point. There are better 3.5mm jacks available that have a clutch mechanism, a very small version of the one that we used on the XLR side. However, sometimes they're hard to get a hold of and this is what I had on hand. This is an Amphenol connector, which I really like. They have a little shoulder on them, which makes the connector longer so they can plug into a phone or an iPad or something while it's in a case. Now we're all finished, we can sit back and admire our good work. I'm going to go ahead and put a Velcro tie on this one to keep it organized. Now keep in mind, this is a really simple design. It's unbalanced, and there are better ways to connect balanced and unbalanced equipment. The most legitimate way is to use a transformer. We'll probably do that in another video in the future. But in the meantime, if you're really interested in how to correctly do something like this, you can go to jensen-transformers.com and look at the application notes. There's a couple pages there regarding the interfacing of balanced and unbalanced equipment. And that being said, we have reached the end of our video. So thanks so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I hope you'll stick around and check out another video or two or come back soon to see what we're getting into here at The Rock Studio.